Hello, welcome to NPTEL NOC on introductory course on point set topology part 2. Today we will do module 16 and a new concept total boundedness. In a metric space, there is another important concept which is a consequence of compactness, namely the boundedness. However, boundedness itself is too fragile a condition because any metric space can be equivalently changed, the metric can be changed into bounded metric without changing the topology, right? So, we are looking for some version of boundedness property which is not so fragile. Once again, we go back to the link between abstract topology and metric spaces, namely the fundamental open subsets, open balls. Okay. So, here is a definition let Xt be a metric space let epsilon be positive real number n in m by an epsilon net in x we mean a finite subset x1 x2 xn of x such that the entire space x is contained inside the finitely many open balls centered at xi and radius epsilon Okay, so these epsilon balls are enough to cover the whole thing and of course, if you take all the points, it is always possible, but finitely many points only. So, we say Xd is totally bounded if for every epsilon, there is an epsilon net. So, obviously, this is much stronger if we, if we have an take an epsilon balls that will admit a finite subcover that is what it means okay not all open subsets are admitting finite cover. so this almost comes to very close to compactness so it has something to do with compactness already so let us see what okay so total boundedness is some kind of restricted compactness that is the first thing to note every open cover of x by balls of a fixed radius they admit a finite subcover it is clear that any compact metric space is totally bounded because you can take balls of fixed radius positive fixed radius that will be that will allow you a finite subcover right because it's compact in general, it is not clear why a total bounded metric space should be compact. Also observe that total boundedness implies boundedness automatically because all that you have to take is the, the x1, x2, xn and look at the diameter of this uh, small, the, this uh, finite set x1, x2, xn, add it twice epsilon, that is all every point will be inside that much distance between any two points will be less than that that is what you can see so total boundedness implies boundedness in the euclidean spaces even the converse is true thus our intuition may easily mislead us so you see total boundedness is much more stronger than boundedness but in the euclidean space you <laughs> you don't have this problem so indeed, it is clear that a bounded subset need not be totally bounded since the metric can be simply changed to a bounded metric all the time. Okay, then it was that was the place, then everything would have been so this is just a you know a guesswork, but we will see the examples unless you see an example, you will not be satisfied. Recall that if a Cauchy sequence admits a subsequence which is convergent, then the sequence itself is convergent. Thus, in a sequentially compact metric space, 
sequential compactness remember what it is every sequence is a subsequence which is convergent every quasi sequence will be convergent because it will admit a subsequence which is convergent because it's quasi it will, that quasi sequence itself will converge this latter property is known as completeness right every quasi sequence convergent is completeness right so somehow when studying the sequential compactness etc we are forced to think about completeness also then there is another important property all the time used in analysis of metric spaces namely compact metric spaces namely the lebesgue property so i will just recall it what is the meaning of lebesgue there is a theorem of lebesgue and then whatever it satisfies the lebesgue property you have made for each open cover u of x you must find a positive delta such that the family of balls of radius delta form a refinement of u if you take any ball of radius delta anywhere in the space such a ball will be contained in one of the members of u that is the meaning of refinement right so that is the lebesgue property so it's also worth recalling that if x satisfies lebesgue property then every continuous function from x to any space y is uniformly continuous continuity implies uniformly continuity you have been studying that on a compact space is compact you know interval closed interval sorry closed and bounded subset of rn and so on that is analysis okay but now you see that all that you need is the lebesgue property not compactness as such right so so how far can we go how far are they right actually from compactness our next aim is to obtain a characterization of compact metric spaces in terms of these properties lebesgue property sequential compactness total boundedness and so on okay so that is the theorem here there are six criteria here the first one is x compact so you can say five different criteria for a compact metric space you start with the metric space then the following conditions are equivalent x is compact x is countably compact x is limit point compact x is sequentially compact x is totally bounded and has lebesgue property x is totally bounded and complete so these first three are the ones which you have studied last time these two new things are there now which are our old things except the total boundedness is new lebesgue property and completeness is old uh, friends right so let us go through the proof of this equivalent 1 implies 2 implies 3 implies 4 implies 5 implies 6 implies 1 that would have been ideal thing the easiest way somehow i am not able to arrange it in that way so i will just follow a slightly different approach here this is 1 implies 2 implies 3 4 5 and directly 1 then 4 and 6 are equivalent separately okay all right so observe that a metric space is both t1 and first countable this is what i have already told you last time thus we have already seen 1 implies 2 implies 3 implies 4 right compactness implies countable compactness sequential compactness so let me see the same order countable compactness limit point compactness and sequential compactness okay these things we have already seen all right we have seen more than that but right now the concentration is up till here we have already proved so these two implications and these two implications are left out right now okay So let us prove four implies five. Namely, this is sequential compactness, sequentially compact metric space. Huh? 
so we want to show that it is totally bounded and satisfies lebesgue property that is what we have to show right to prove total boundedness suppose there exists epsilon positive such that no finite number of poles of epsilon radius cover x that means there is no epsilon net okay that is the negation of total boundedness choose a point x not in x any point doesn't matter after that x1 x2 x3 x3 inductively how do you choose xn will be chosen in x minus b epsilon of xk union carrying from 1 to n minus 1 so x2 will be chosen x minus b1 i know b epsilon of x1 then take b b epsilon of x1 b epsilon of x2 after choosing x2 choose x3 in the complement of that and so on by sequential compactness a subsequence x in k will convert to some point a for there exists some k not such that k is bigger than k not will imply all these x in k points of the subsequence they are inside b epsilon by 2 ball of a I can take epsilon by three, epsilon by four, whatever. Epsilon by two seems to be sufficient here. Okay. Hence, the distance between x and k, and x and k plus one, n plus k plus one, or anything, anything after that, will be less than epsilon, right? On the other hand, n plus k, uh, n of k plus one is bigger than n k. I mean, it is coming later on. Therefore. This x n plus k n k plus one is not in the previous ball epsilon ball. <laughs> that is absurd here. You see, this says that this this point is in epsilon ball of this point, but it says it's not. All right, so that is a, already a contradiction. So we have proved total boundedness. So no problem. Things are things are straightforward. If this is not true, what happens? Just that's it. Okay. Second part we have to prove. What is that? Total boundedness, Lebesgue property. Lebesgue property is also very close here. Let now U I be any open cover. Assume that this cover has no Lebesgue number. What is the meaning of that? This means that you know the Lebesgue number says there exists some delta positive. So for every delta positive, something should happen. That is the word, right? Then for every n, so now instead of every delta, I am choosing n, then one by n. I am applying it one by n. Okay, there exists x n inside x such that b one by n x n is not contained in any u i. You can go to b one by two. Okay, there will be one point B one itself, B one of x one will not be contained in any U I. Next, B one by two x two will not be contained in so on. So you get a sequence. Let y k be a subsequence of x n, which converges to y. Let y belong to U I C. Okay, so y must be in one of the open open subsets here because U I is an open cover. Choose m such that b one by m y is contained in the side. Now there exists a k not such that for all k bigger than k not, all the y k's must be in b one by twice m. Okay, half of b one by m ball of radius one by two m around y. Okay, now. If you take y k equal to x n k, okay, is such that this n k is bigger than 2 m, right? So it's a subsequence. So you can take this n k as large as you want. N k bigger than 2 m, then what happens? B 1 by n k at x n k will be contained in B 1 by m y, right? So this entire ball will be inside the tone because 
this point will be there and it is in the and the, the distance between uh, any point in the ball and this point is less than 1 by 2m 1 by 2 so uh, together it will be less than 1 by m so that will be less than so it will be contained in the b1 but b1 by m y is contained inside u y is by choice and that's a contradiction okay you see the proof of lebesgue number lebesgue property as well as this one is more or less similar here okay using the sequential compact this is all because we can use the metric here that is all otherwise there is no problem so now i will prove five implies one that namely what is five total boundariness and satisfies the big property okay that will give you compactness just like <laughs> just like we observed that countably compact and lindelof implies compactness so it, the proof is not that simple almost is you know so the, so five implies one is also not difficult so let us go through the proof start with any open cover let r positive be a lebesgue number now by total boundedness there exist finitely many balls br xi which cover x since each of these balls is contained in some ui we get if bi is covered ui corresponding ui will cover okay so that's all right so we have left with 4 implies 6 and and 6 implies 2 6 6 implies 4 so 4 is what 4 is sequentially compactness 6 is total boundedness and completeness okay so these are also not difficult given an open cover ui i mean on to x okay this we have finished sorry so here four implies the first part of this has been proved in the implication four implies five okay so total for total boundedness the four is a sequential compactness i have here total boundedness plus completeness but we already proved total boundedness and lebesgue property so there we have already proved that one completeness has been observed already in the remark 3 above right start the cauchy sequence as a sequence it has a subsequence is convergent therefore it is convergent so so 4 implies 6 is easy so that is why i have taken that one all right now finally i have to show that 6 implies 4 let xn be any sequence in x the idea is to show that it has a subsequence which is cauchy by completeness the cauchy sequence will converge and that is that will over instead of so that is so you know you want to show that there is a sequence which is convergent you have to just show it's cauchy here okay now from total boundedness for each k greater than or equal to 1 let us first get a finite subset ak such that x is covered by b1k 1 by k balls around points of this ak what is ak ak is a finite set okay that's total boundedness for each k there will be 1 by k is epsilon here so this epsilon net for epsilon equal to 1 by k now by the pigeon hole principle there exists an infinite subset n1 of n and a1 belonging to a capital 1 such that all n belonging to n1 we have xn is in b1 of a1 okay a1 a2 ak are there for each k right so look at a1 okay there are only finitely many balls here and there is infinite subset infinite sequence so you will have uh, pigeon hole principle is infinite to finite that's all exist in infinite subset n1 
such that n one a one is a point of the unit such that all n inside n one okay this n point subset all the extensions are in b one of a one okay in a one there are finitely many one of them uh, has to have infinitely many and one of the balls have to be infinitely many so i am calling that as b one of a one similarly you can choose in infinite subset n k of previously chosen n k minus 1s because each is an infinite set such that this a k there will be an a k inside a capital k some point such that the ball of radius 1 by k contains all this n k all this infinite subset okay so once you have chosen this nested sequence of infinite subsets of starting with infinite set here these are indexing sets by the way so that there are extensions corresponding sequence will come out okay let nk be the least number in n capital k okay <laughs> capital nk which is bigger than nk minus 1 choose n1 to be anything inside n1 then n2 you have to choose bigger but the smallest one you have to give what choice so i am telling you least number okay then we claim that this sequence xnk is a cauchy sequence okay so this choice was not all that obvious how to do this but we have done this kind of uh, even more complicated choices here anyway so why xnk is a cauchy given epsilon positive take k not such that 1 by k not is less than epsilon n by 2 then if k and l are greater than k not xn k and xn l will be inside one b of 1 by k not a k not right both of them will be here what is the meaning of that the distance between them is at most epsilon by you know twice 1 by k not so twice 1 by k not is less than epsilon So given every epsilon, I have chosen. I have given you some k not such that bigger than that distance is less than epsilon means that this sequence is Cauchy. They are all coming nearer and nearer to some finitely many points each time. So that is why so this becomes a Cauchy sequence. Cauchy sequence conversion. Okay. So that completes proof of. almost big theorem i mean looking big right so we have this these are the implication that we have proved now all right so here is uh, my exercise i will go through that you can you are welcome to solve them and get uh, answers from uh, checked and so on easy application of theorem 4.10 <laughs> that's what you know take x x to r be continuous real world function where x is countably compact then show that f is bounded and attains its extrema okay so this is similar to what we remarked namely lebesgue property implies uniform continuity so comp under compactness this is weierstrass theorem any continuous function on a compact set to real numbers is bounded and attains its extremum both uh, maximum and minimum right no need for compactness countably compactness is enough so try your hand let x be a metric space for each r positive show that there exists a subset ar of x which is maximal with respect to the property that for any two points x y not equal to y, x not equal to y inside a r the distance between x and y is bigger than r you get the point you have to, for each r okay you have to subset each any two points are at a distance bigger than r For example, if you have just two points, suppose R is one, 
the distance between these two points must be at least one then third point all the distance between the one one between one and two two and three all of them must be bigger than one and so on okay choose a maximal such uh, subset ar okay so that is uh, there exist a maximal subset that's what you have to show further if x is a limit point compact then show that any such ar is finite in a compact vector space you have proved such things now you have to prove it for limit point compact space you know limit point compact matrix space show that every matrix space which is limit point compact is separable and hence second countable in particular conclude that every compact or countably compact matrix space is second countable which you might have proved in a different way elsewhere okay so next time we will prove the very important uh, functional uh, result namely ascoli's theorem thank you